So if you've been following along on the saga of the player piano, and here it is. There's the upper part, all mostly put back together. And over here is the lower part, which I am working on now. Uh, I mentioned that I was going to try to patch the bellow. The main, this is the main reservoir bellow, and these are the pump bellows. And um, I got the idea from Steve's uh, piano repair website, and um, he gave instructions about using um, rubber cement and cotton cloth to repair the, um, the bellows. And as you recall, I'm not exactly sure if I showed this in one of the previous videos, the corners of these bellows had some tears in them, and I've noticed that the outer layer of cotton in places along these edges here where it folds have got some places where it's coming apart, so the worst areas I've reinforced. And on this corner, I made um, a patch right here, and then a patch right here. And this corner was worse, if you remember. This whole area right under here, the outer layer of fabric was torn, and it was just the inner layer of fabric holding it together. And this corner here was pretty split too. So there's actually two very large pieces patching it here, and I've went ahead and put the spring back on this end to help it um, finish gluing in the right position and I've got to cut the hole out here and the hole out here to put the um, regulator back on for the air motor but um, it seems to have been a lot easier to do than I thought it was going to be I used just regular old um, Elmer's rubber cement this is a yellow rubber cement you can see there it, you know the color of it when it dries and um, it's a bit like doing uh, fiberglass work. You take and you brush the rubber cement. Oh, I've got an acid brush here. Brush the rubber cement on the area that you're going to patch. And then while it's brush, you brush it on fairly thick. And while it's still wet, you layer the um, fabric on. This is some uh, woven cotton fabric that I bought at Joann's. It's it's not real, real heavy compared to like blue jean fabric, but it's the heaviest plain woven cloth that they've get, they had. And um, sort of figure out where you need to uh, make the patches and um, coat. You can see I, I left a margin where I coated the, um, the underlying fabric and then laid it on there fairly heavy and then laid this down and got it nice and tight like you can see and then went over it pressed it into the rubber cement that was brushed on and then went over it again with another layer of uh, rubber cement and I've actually done several layers painting it on there and you can see there's little bits of extra it balls up the extra does but brush it out nice and even nice and thin and um, it seems to have made a very nice repair job. I don't know um, at this point how well it's going to perform, but it, from what I know about rubber cement, should get another year or two of service out of this original cloth um, before it really needs to be replaced, or you could just, you know, touch it back up again. So. Obviously, at this stage, I'm still sort of a newbie at the player piano world, and I'm not really wanting to um, recover it yet, although that would probably be a very good option to do. Um, this does seem to be pretty viable, and it, and it really, really doesn't look too bad done neatly like this. There's a piece of cloth here from this corner over where I did this side first, then another piece 
here, so the area with the greatest wear, the, where it folds, has a double layer. And then on the edges here, there's a single layer. And once I get done with the work on the um, reservoir, I'll take a look at the main bellows themselves. And honestly, the main bellows themselves did not look real bad. They, they looked halfway decent. So maybe just some minor patches and corners and things. And then I'll be able to uh, put this all back together. And the other thing that needs to be looked at is the governor. And this is the governor. I've been looking at it with a flashlight. It actually looks really nice. But if you look at it with a flashlight, you can see there's some holes in these corners here. And this would actually be a really easy piece probably to go ahead and recover. But since I'm at this point in time just doing some patchwork, I might make some little patches and put on these corners here. And then maybe do a little bit of touch-up work back here on the back. I think there was a hole in one of these corners here by the on the hinge end. And um, everything goes well. I should be able to, by the end of the weekend, have this reassembled. And maybe try to run the piano with uh, the foot pumps again. And an uh, important thing to think about, too, is the fact that I'm going to be converting this to electric. I'm going to leave the foot pumps, but going to be adding a electric vacuum pump to uh, have dual power. And I've already thought a lot about how I'm going to do that. And I'll have to probably tap in probably somewhere around here, drill a hole to mount the connector for the pump and then the, run the hose across and down. So it'll be basically dual powered. You can run it either uh, with the foot pedals or you could run it with the um, electric pump. And I'm going to go all out when I do this. I've looked at some other pianos that were made during the same time period that this piano was made to see how they were set up as far as the electrical controls. And I'm going to use the knob off of a, a Victrola for an on-off knob. I'm going to mount right here and pull, off, pull out to turn on and push in the turn off. And an, an vintage switch mounted right here with, with the rod that runs across. There's, there's going to be enough clearance between here and the motor and drive train, uh, chain to do that, to have a, a, a switch knob right here with a, a, a rod that comes across and then a switch mounted here. And then I'm going to find a porcelain receptacle and mount a porcelain receptacle up here somewhere and have a wire and a, a light here in the upper spool box area. So during the show, when this thing is in operation, probably going to leave the front, probably going to have the front covers off so people can see the upper mechanism, but going to leave the bottom cover on where all you can see is the foot pedals and it will hide the pump motor, which will sit in that corner over there. And uh, you'll just see the, the switch and the period looking. You know, I'm going to use cloth-covered wire and everything to uh, make it look even better looking. And uh, it'll, it'll be pretty nice. It'll be dual-powered. You don't have to sit there in front of the piano and pump it. You can put a roll on and sit down and listen to the piano. Or, or the person demonstrating it can just stand there next to it and, um, and demonstrate it. So it's going to work out real nice. So that's where the uh, update is right now on the um, status of this piano, uh, getting it back into working order. Uh, eventually I am going to recover. I'll start with the lower stuff here because it looks like it's going to be a simpler job to do. Recover the foot pedals, recover this, recover the 
the governor. And I'll do videos on that when I eventually get to that. But for now, just getting the piano running again, because it's been idle since 1963, um, I'm just going ahead and, and, and testing out some of these um, techniques that I've read about for repairing the corners of the bellows and things to see just what kind of service um, to expect from this kind of work and um, we'll just we'll just have to see so anyway this is Oklahoma Bridges and thank you for watching bye